ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJPW Poodle Dress Review. I am your co host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the DDT princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? I am doing great, Andre. We were just talking backstage here before we came on. I've been watching some DDT to kind of give myself a little break from the tournaments as I was doing my, my dish. I thought I was crazy cupcakes. <laughs> Holy hot diggity dang. They got some crazy ish over there that I need to keep watching because it amuses me. How are you <laughs> doing, my friend? I am doing very crazy cupcakes right now. So, and I remember, it's one word. We, we established that on Saturday. It it's one word. It is one word. It is always one word. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, uh, good day off today. It's Sunday as we record this. It was a good day off. Watch, uh, had some good news happen today. Maybe some some events made me happy. So, you know, mm -hmm. good day. Good mm -hmm. day overall. Good day overall. I bet. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yep. We're not here to talk about the good stuff. We're here to talk about some great stuff oh. that happened uh, a few days ago. Uh, on well, a week ago because it happened on August 10th, August 12th, and August 14th, and it's day, uh, days 14, 15, and 16. The last three days of round robin action in the G1 mm -hmm. Climax 34. Yes. And holy shit, what a tournament we have had this year! Like, remember last year, we were kind of like, This one's okay, mm. it was only okay. This year was holy hecking crap. I feel like the right amount of people were introduced, the right amount of people were showcased, and the right people are, are kind of getting into the spots that they deserve to be in. All but one, yeah. All but one guy. Yeah. Yeah. I one, guy, know. one guy didn't one guy didn't make it and I was I was I was sad, but that's fair. That's fair. We all have our favorites. We do. We do. So we're going to get into that. Before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for coming out here, watching our videos, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube. Whether you're watching on uh, Andre Mobile Verse and Talk, whether you're watching on Backbreaker Video, or you're listening on A Plus Productions on the wrestling feed, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are listening on A Plus Productions, thank you so much. Uh, just subscribe to us in your podcast gadget. Give us some likes. We really do appreciate it. And check us out over on the Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, whether it's Andre Mobile Wrestling Talk, whether it's Backbreaker Video, thank you so much. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below don't forget to hit that or don't forget to share so tell your friends family and uh crazy little people with the last name of honda and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video Ding dong. hello Hello. oh geez i got ddt on the brain now because i'm also talking about it so well, about that Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was so there, there. Antonio Honda is interesting. He's a character. He he's he's a step above Yano. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, he really is. Uh, I'd love to see the two of them kind of get together and do something. I think that could be that can make for some insanely fun times. Oh yeah, but could you imagine how long that would be? Because, like, Antonio's matches go really, really long because of all the shenaniganisms that he does throughout the match. Could you imagine how long that match would be just between that and Yano's intro? Just imagine that, those two, but and make it a three-way with evil, so even more shenanigans. Oh, my God. It would be an hour-long match, and you would get, maybe get, like, ten minutes of wrestling. I know. That's why it would be so so. It'd be cool. like an episode of Raw. <laughs> Uh, there's more oh, wrestling than that mean, now. There's there more wrestling there now. We're gonna get yeah, into now it. We're out of the dementia era. Yeah, we're gonna get in. We're gonna talk some uh, G on uh, Climax 34, starting with day 14. When we kicked it off, oh, like Bolton versus Kanosuke Takeshi. Holy shit! Who? Bolton Oleg versus Kanosuke Takeshi. Holy crap! This was a good match. Like just phenomenal match. These two yeah. killed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gonna take us to the finish real quick on this one? Yeah, I'm just gonna jump to the finish on this one. Um, mm -hmm. I do have to give out one spot. There's some really cool spot here early on in the match. Uh, Takesha has Bolton on the ropes, and he just 
elbows him in the face, like just throws that forearm, the elbow just smacks him in the face. So Bolton just responds by grabbing him around the waist, turning and just throwing him across the ring with that belly to belly suplex. So good. That was yeah, where he ended up outside of the ring. That was also one of the also uh, spots that I also had written down. Yeah. Yeah, just just some beautiful spots in this match. I thought the two big men just smacking into each other. So good. At the end mm-hmm. of the match, Bolton hits a shotgun dropkick. He only gets one. Bolton gets him up on his shoulders, but Takeshita slips down into a roll up, but then hits up, pa- the, goes to the power drive knee, but it's caught. Takeshita gets sent into the ropes and he gets hit with the verdict. And Bolton follows it up with the kamikaze for the win. Yes, yes. Um, the only thing, other thing I wanted to mention was there was a German suplex by Oleg where he pretty much just dropped. Takeshita on the back of his head looks so good. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Yeah, um, I think I'll mention it later in in the show. But yeah, these both of these guys super super impressive throughout this G one, especially for me to cash cut, and we'll mention why later. Okay. Good okay. Good match. Good match. Yeah, we move on. It's Hanare versus Ren Narita. I thought these two actually had a really good solid match. There's a lot of like good back and forth in here, and Narita. Mm. Did get into some shenanigans as he's known to do. But yeah, I thought strong match. Um, though we got to the end and it was just it, the usual from uh, Mr. Narita of the Ren variety. Uh, Narita stops the Streets of Rage, slips down, runs him into the ref, hits him with a low blow, hits the up kick to the face, and hits a double cross for the win. And Newman is on commentary and he's just like, He's got nothing for this because he's just not happy. <laughs> wow. And it's unfortunate that it's a cheating win. And then even more unfortunate with Hanare being the never open weight champion. Mm. That being said, though, I feel like we are starting to plateau with Narita a little bit. He's done a lot of character growth, a lot of... Um, kind of figuring out his character over the last little months or mm. little months a few months especially having his like whole pretty much gimmick jacked by jack perry there for a little bit um yeah. he i feel like we have he's climbed as high as he can right now and that we are starting to see him plateau a little bit which is why i think we're starting to see, see the shenanigans a little bit more and i think with this potential opportunity here, I feel like a singles title would be the next reasonable step for Narita to actually kind of solidify him as a, a, a coming back as a like a one of the three musketeers. I don't feel that the the six man championships really did anything to elevate him. No, it didn't really devalue him, but it didn't elevate him either. I feel like a run with the never title could be something that could help him out a lot. Yeah, he had the wrong never title is what he had. Agreed. But for the time that he had it and the character he was, it was the right one. Because you can imagine, my mm. words did not come out there. Could you imagine the the Katsuyora Shibata version of Red Narita as the never open weight champion? No. That would have been not good. That would have been as underwhelming as Sonata's run with the IWGP championship. Like in the ring, that would have been some fire ass matches. Don't get me wrong, but the oh, guy yeah. had had nothing as a mm-hmm. character. And I love Shibata. I think Shibata, while being a very stoic face, he has this weird underlying charisma to him. That, mm-hmm. It's an effortless that he, kind. That he could just be the wrestler, and you and he just turn. But he has that ability to turn his face into that perfect look to get you to mm-hmm. care and he knows how to fire up when he needs to where narita didn't quite have that before turning mm-hmm. heel so yeah there is one mm-hmm. spot in this match i do want to talk mm-hmm. about so hanari is going for ultima and narita ends up like grabbing the ref at the ref and the ref just hauls off to slap narita and narita ducks and he slaps the shit out of hanari and hanari is just like just turns on the ref ready to kill him. Because it was Marty, wasn't it? It was Marty. <laughs> I think it was Marty, yeah. And so the smallest freaking ref of all of the refs, first of all, 
But Marty is one of the more ballsy ones in regards to if you put your hands on him, chances are he will fight you back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was great. That was great. He used his light flash before his eyes. Yeah. We move on to an absolutely killer match in Hiroki Goto mm-hmm. versus El Fantasmo. Fantasmo's rocking that light that does light that lit the jacket all lit up now. And yes. man, like it's a whole different version of ELP now that the jacket's lit up. He's so much got so much more fire. The picture looks weird because it looks like his nose is super red, though. Doesn't it look like his nose is yeah. Like... a little yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, man. does look like he has black eyes though too. So that's true. Might just be the shading <laughs> on this one. Uh but yeah, dude, yeah. these two killed it. And the going back and forth was so good. Just mm-hmm. uh like ELP that top uh, off the top turnbuckle with that moonsault to the floor at one point. Yeah. So Damn. Good. And and Goto is just he's got so much fire. He's showing so much heart in this tournament. It's just so good, man. Um Get, and they called it, he hit a, the inverted GTR into the Goto Bomber. They even yelled Goto Bomber. Yes, they um, did. Phenomenal. I loved, I loved it, man. But these two, sorry, ELP, man, I, I love that he's gotten rid of the unidentified flying opponent where he used to tie the guy up, put him on his shoulders, and spin. Now he does the same tie up, but just goes into the burning hammer instead. I, I, I love that he's I, I kinda like that he got away from the spin out into the burning hammer now. I can understand that because the G one is kinda like don't wanna like devalue the junior, but it is the big boy leagues and that kind of spin is definitely more I would attribute to a junior style um move. I would like to maybe see him add maybe one or two rotations though, instead of like go for a, like a whippity 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 whippity. Maybe yeah, one or two rotations before the burning camera would be cool. That would be good. So the end of this match comes. Uh, ELP loads up sudden death, but uh, but ends up not being able to get it. So he lifts Goto up, but uh, he slips and gets and go and Goto hits a headbutt and hits a Ushikaroshi. Goto goes up and uh, gets up and hits the chest kick and the G. TW, but again, only two. GTR gets reversed into a backslide, and ELP finally hits sudden death. They trade roll ups, and ELP catches a crucifix for the three count and the win. ELP, yeah. ELP does the sports thing and helps go to up, and they do have a hug, which is nice to see the kind of because they were, they were enemies for a while with their whole tag war. Mm-hmm, they were, they were, they weren't at that time in the same weight class, I don't think. Mm. Um, well, but, they, they uh, competed yeah. over the, the, the titles last year, remember? They had that, like, oh, right, right, Hikaleo, Hikaleo. Yeah. Sorry, I was thinking yeah. Ishimori. Mm. Sorry, no, no, yeah, yeah. I have to remember how long Bishamon has kind of been around, also. They've kind of <laughs> too they've long, kind of lingered and lingered and lingered and lingered and lingered, yeah, they yeah. <laughs> Um, this was a fun one for me too. I was excited to see the jacket lit up. And I really, again, I love the story that was told in this G1 with both of these guys. And it made this match for me, especially with the combination of commentary with, um, Newman and Walker Stewart. Why did well, I was going to call him Stuart Walker. I was going to, I was going to pull a U with poor Oleg Bolton. That's his real name. I know, but that's not what his name is in the company, doof. Anyway, back to the stories. These The stories through this G1 for both of these guys have been tremendous. So the sense of urgency for both of them in this match was, was just in, incredible. Again, the combination of the commentary, the combination of, of these guys and the backstage storytelling, it was such a great match. And it, for me, felt like a little bit more of an emotional match as opposed to just another match in the round robin. It, it mm. felt like it meant a little bit more despite standing some points and stuff like that. It felt it was like Whoville, the Grinch. Yeah. Meant a little bit more. Yeah. I agree. Mm. So we move on to Jeff Cobb versus Dave Finley in an incredible match. These two, I, I really felt like the first half of this match was Finley trying to overcome the power advantage that Cobb had. And then he kind of mm-hmm. went into like, he's cheating ways and like, what, like going for the eyes when he got him out to the floor but and, and doing that kind of stuff. And he ends up like 
tackling Cobb uh, through the barricade door. He gets him back in. He's got him on his knees, and he's just landing in those cross face shots from behind, like just uh, like he got, and he, he just got so vicious, and he finally got in control. But like Cobb just mm-hmm. tossing Finley around early on in the match was so beautiful. Um, yeah, uh, Finley, uh, Finley just beat doing a lot of work, and but Cobb ended up getting the rampage at one that ran the. A rampage like move. The Hanari looks like the Hanari's rampage. He does it too. Where he gets yeah, yeah, yeah. up and slams the guy. Uh, and he, mm-hmm. but he drops that elbow after that. This looks so good. Yeah. And then he hits the standing moonsault for two. So Finley stops the Aloha Maker with some huge elbows and he ends up busting out the acid drop, which he hasn't hit since the Juice Robinson days, I want to say. Because, yeah, because. He had that move as his finisher, and then he replaced it with Trash Panda, which became which kind of his his thing mm-hmm. his, his move when him and Juice broke up until he went heel. His move was Trash Panda, and mm-hmm. which is now into Oblivion. But yeah, I I I was like, holy crap! It's been years since I've seen him do an acid drop. Right, right, and I think they mentioned that on commentary also. They did. Um, so. The end of this match comes. Cobb hits a back body drop, then takes him out with a huge lariat, but the Aloha Maker gets blocked. Cobb gets the backslide, but Finley rolls through into a power bomb. He hits another one, lifts him up, overkill for the win. This broke my freaking heart, man. I was hoping Cobb could solidify himself into the into the into the playoffs with a win here. Yeah, yeah. And, but, you know, we've been seeing this savage build at the tail end of this G1 from some David Finley. And he's just kind of risen to every kind of challenge and occasion that's kind of been put in front of him. One, he there was one point where he got him up for an Irish curse, where Finley got Cobb up for an Irish curse. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Cobb's not winning this. He just proved he can pick him up. He could do it. He could take him. Incredible match. Incredible match. And we again, we saw another kind of step in the evolution of Finley getting closer and closer to the end there. We did. Mm-hmm. We really did. And again, like Finley just so smooth. It's just it, it's it's so good. Everything that he does, he has this just ability to just make you hate him, but make you just want to see more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of sounds like our local favorite, Andy Anderson. Yeah. Healiest heel that's ever healed in the history of healing. Yeah, and, and and I find Finley is that same kind of heel. Just that heel that makes you want to see more and more and more. Mm-hmm. While simultaneously hating him. It's great. Yep, yep. So we move on, main event. In what was a great match until one point in this match. Uh, these two just killed it. Again, really showing why these two can... Uh, and showing why Yui Mura is surprising us in this tournament. He's just, he's living up to what the potential that was there for him. He's finally living up to it in this tournament. We have, we've been raving about him all mm-hmm. tournament long and even mm-hmm. here he was so good. And like Suji and, and the Boston crab with Yuri Mura and just that whole story they were telling and he finally getting him in the Boston crab, but can only hold on to it with, because, because he doesn't, because of his arm being like getting mm-hmm. beat on throughout the match. Just, just to come the way they told the story with these two in here. Um, and then he gets the boss and crab on, but then he turns it into a clover leaf at one point in the match. It's just, it's just a great story they're telling. But at one point in this match, Yui Mura started to have a dead right arm. It just became a floppy mess. Like we don't know what the extent of his injury is, but it, it was it's either in his elbow or in his shoulder because something mm-hmm. was not right. It was really mm-hmm. floppy, is what I noticed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when when I dislocated my shoulder, I could still move my elbow and I could still move my hands and stuff. It was difficult, but I could still move it. I couldn't flop it up. The the muscles were not there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't know. It sucks so bad. I, I think I mentioned this before in Japanese Wrestling Update. I feel the same bad for Yuya that I felt for Yo 
finally facing show for the IWGP Junior Championship and dislocating his what it what was it his shoulder within like a few minutes. I'm of the match not even starting. the the official match time was only like a minute. But they and had like, done some crazy thing, show on the outside for a minute or two before that, too. Yoda Nakashima, same thing. Facing, ironically, Yuya Uemura before his excursion with his elbow. Mm-hmm. Kabooers. Kabooers. Yeah, but uh, they did wrestle a little more. Suji getting a lot of the offense in, striking him. Uh, he gets the Marlo crash, only gets two. Um, he lines up for Gene Blast, but it's stopped with an arm drag using the other arm. By by uh by you and Mura. Um he gets a crucifix for two. They start trading strikes, and Yuri Mura just it seems like they caught it was like a finish they called kind of called on the fly because it seemed like almost out of place that he just that he just pulled him like they were trading strikes and then he just pulls him down into a small package for the wing because they figured like the strike's supposed to happen. He was probably supposed to catch both the arms into deadbolt, hit that deadbolt suplex for the win i'm guessing in in something of that fashion because they're in the strikes and then he just rolled them up he just smell packages them for the win so mm-hmm. odd ending to what should have been a very insane main event mm-hmm. yeah yeah it, it was a very odd ending it felt very off there was a little bit of confusion kind of going on but they handle they always handle these kind of odd endings very very well um, in this company and and like only these kind of dark hard fans I think really notice because the same thing happened with um, Okada and Ibushi remember when Ibushi mm. sky sparkled his face and oh I remember La- yeah wasn't that a G1 also or was that the cup no that was the G1 <laughs> with with uh, Okada I think it was the G1 finals with Okada yeah Dang it. Uh, Yoda goes on, though. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he's still, Yoda Suji still in contention at eight points after this night. So uh, you have David mm-hmm. Finley, Jeff Cobb, and Renarina on top with 10 points. Then you have Yoda Suji, uh, Hiroki Goto, and Kanosuke Takeshi, each with eight points. Then you have Hanari, Yuyamura, Bolton Lake, and El Phantasmo. Oh, no, sorry. You had four. Sorry, you had eight points here too. I apologize um, for off this win, but mm-hmm. uh, he is officially eliminated from the tournament because he cannot score another win due to him withdrawing. So his match with Oleg Bolton Oleg will officially go to Bolton Oleg for the point win. Uh, so he is eliminated along with Hanare uh, and Bolton Oleg and El Fantasmo. Right now, with always six points, and Bolton will get to eight, but he is still officially eliminated. Mm-hmm. So we move on to night or day fifteen, um, and we kick it's a block. We kick it off. It is Gabe Kid versus Cal Newman, and holy moly, uh, kid, kids like yelling into the camera, calling uh, Newman an Osprey wannabe, calling like saying he's not good enough, and Newman just comes flying out of the ring, hitting him with a toe base to his cedar. Uh Then he comes off the top with a flying knee to the head. It looked like. Um, gets him back in, hits that corner drop, kicking the hop up stomp. Uh, Oz cutter stopped and just a bunch of reversals. Really good here. Um, kid really working him over throughout the match, but Newman getting a lot of uh offense in throughout here, too. Um, so the ending of this comes each one's dodging the other's moves and doing a bunch of reversals. A uh, kid, kid ends up, uh, missing a, a move. Uh, it hits an uh, elbow. It hits an elbow. Newman backflips over him. Like as he's cat, as he come in and backflips over into a German looks just tremendous. Uh, he goes for the Oscar, cutter, but kid catches or stops him with the double chop to the back. Um, and then he hits him with two, Pile drivers, and he gets the win in four minutes and fifty-one seconds. This was a short match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Given the intensity of of the feud happening between these still two factions, still very clearly, um, yeah, I I was expecting it to either go to the time limit or to <laughs> to be pretty quick. Um, I was very impressed with how much Callum did keep up with. Gabe Kid though, um, not to say that he couldn't. He's a prince of pace, but Gabe Kid is known for, you know, kind of 
plucking people down and, and throwing people around kind of thing. So I was very impressed with him being able to pop off a lot of his stuff before Gabe Kid got a hold of him. Um, the after stuff is what kind of bothered me the most, though, was after the match when Kid pulled out the chairs and pile drived Callum on the chairs. That was a little unnecessary, but I feel like it was character development for Kid coming mm-hmm. to the, the kind of end of the G1 here. So mm-hmm. it just sucked. Didn't want to see Callum get beat up. And what sucked even more is like Hanari showed up at commentary right as it was ending. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you couldn't have come out a few minutes earlier. Yeah, it, it was odd. I was like, okay, why well, you're showing up at the end of the match? Okay. Right? Like, I saw him sitting there. Like, I saw kids sitting on the chair in the middle of the ring, and then I hear this, what did I miss? It's like, dude, what? You missed your boy getting the shit kicked out of him. Like, Exactly. One job, Nari. One job. So we move on. Sonata versus Zack Sabre Jr. Let's go. This match was good. Sabre's already guaranteed first place overall in the A block, but can solidify it, just make himself a god. In professional wrestling, if he does this and can, uh, if he can get the win here, uh, Sonata out wrestling Saber early on in this match, getting kind of keeping mm-hmm. keeping keeping the advantage early. But these two really good. Like I thought, these two had a really good smooth transition throughout, uh, flowing from move to move in here. Uh, Saber stopping the TKO into that foot neck snap and then falls with that drop kick to the back of the neck. Look so good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Sonata missing with a shining wizard, but then uh, but he ends up catching a kick and hits a beautiful looking dragon screw to Saber. Just just such such smoothness in what they did here. Um, Saber catching the rounding body press at one point into the arm bar, then into that double arm bar, then it's got like trapping the legs and like cru- just just crucifixing through the arm. Gets a double like the crucifix. Uh, Double arm bar, but like Sonata getting to the road just looks so good. Just the transitioning, and then they go into that part where they go, so Connor roll into Euro clutch, into a Connor roll into Euro clutch. It's just that that back and forth with both these in the same move. There, I loved it. And then, mm-hmm. end of this match comes Shining Wizard by Sonata. Deadfall is stopped, but Sonata gets the moonsault and the and the, the moonsault out of the corner into the skull end, and then they're each switching into the skull end of their own. Uh, and then Saber gets out of it eventually, but Sonata goes for deadfall, but Saber reverses it, catching Son, and then he catches Sonata running as he shoved him off, and he hits the Zack Driver for the win. Fourteen points, baby. 14 points. It's funny because like when you're getting excited and, and this only happens with like a handful of wrestlers on NGPW, you say you go into the end and we get like the last like five notes in one really amazing long run in sentence connected by and then and but and then and but I love it. It's your passion for this sport is evident, my friend. <laughs> Thank um you. What do you what, what do you add to that? I mean, Zack Saber Jr. has this amazing ability with the, just the cocky attitude that he has to give people who lack charisma, like Sonata, charisma. It was great. Like we have been seeing Sonata maintain a certain level of charisma that he usually doesn't in the G one, but this was a, a kip up in in the flow chart. There, this was a a hiccup. This was a, a blip in the heart monitor of Sonata. He's alive, you guys. He's alive. Somewhere in there. Not anymore because he's, de- he's dead and out of this tournament. Well, <laughs> might have something to do with the boots or something. I don't know. Bad luck charm. We move on. Shinga Takagi versus Jake Lee. Holy crap. This is two dudes that are so used to being the dominant power force in a match and hitting like Lee with his giant killing knees and, and Takagi with his, his pumping bombers and lariats and just running into each other. And just how each person would hit each other is really how this match went. I loved how mm-hmm. these two just were 
blocking each other's big lariat or big knee and hitting theirs. I love the way they did that in this match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something that really, really helps also is Shingo Takaki is very, very expressive with his facial expressions. I've seen with Jake Lee. It's kind of, I feel, where both of their kind of charisma doesn't begin, but it's, it's a symptom of the grander scheme of these two characters. Um, yeah, the, the story that was kind of told in this that was just kind of made out of nothing. Two big meaty men hitting meat trying to establish dominance. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, there was a great spot towards the end where uh, Lee goes for a face break shot in the corner. But Takagi kind of ducks it and like pulls him up onto his shoulders out of the corner in mm -hmm. and hits him with the Death Valley driver. Oh, so good! Mm -hmm. well, the mm -hmm. the the ending sequence to this match. <laughs> Shingo gets Lee up to the top. It's that superplex. Uh, he goes for the pumping bombers. Shingo gets a head, but. Lee hits a kick to the head. Shin goes into the corner, but he comes right back out with a pumping bomber and grabs the legs, cradling, and gets the one, the two, and the three to keep himself alive. And what I love about this is Lee is so good with it. He's trying to kick out. You can see there's attempts being made, but he just doesn't quite have the strength. Again, it's a, the subtle storytelling, that subtle psychology of someone who's just got so much experience. Smart bastard. Appropriate name. Oh, like the way these two did this was just amazing. And then Lee getting mm. out, like yelling at the rep, gets out of the ring, yells at the ring announcer as he's announcing to Kagi again. Yeah, and gets out yelling at, at the ring announcer because it, it, he's mad about the ring about it being called for Terry. And then he gets back in and it starts attacking Takagi when he when the ref's raising his hand and they the, 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 everybody has to pull him off. And it was just well, get get Lord, taken just... out here. They gave him such ability to like be such a good bad guy going forward because he's such a dick. <laughs> Did we put him on the wrong bullet club? No, I think he's going to fit in with War Dogs just fine. Yep, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I don't know if he, if you're just talking like Chase Owens and Kenta's bullet club side part, I don't know if he's fit in quite as well with them. I don't know if they really quite fit in with them. They just kind of go from group to group, don't they? Bullet Club. They're just they Bullet Club. Like yeah, they're, like the look. Those guys are like because remember, there's Bullet Club and then there's there's Bullet Club and then there's War Dogs, mm -hmm. right? And there's Bullet Club around the War Dogs. So and then yeah, go bang bang booty gang and ABC and they're they're like they have those like they're they're like they're like little offshoots that have like the little lines connecting them to their group. <laughs> You need a flow chart to keep up with Bullet Club. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> you really do. So we move on to a match. I was, it was good, I guess. Um, Evil making the announcer read a statement about how Umino isn't here or some shit, but it's all garbage because Umino music hits and he makes his way out, fights Evil and Togo, running Evil into the barricades and then get in and. We get it, but Evil take, get, taking over using the exposed corner and working him over for a good way of the match, cheating throughout, using his little dick and everything. Um, well, his little dick Togo. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just and showed up with some great comebacks here. Like he, he, again, he mm -hmm. has that he has that Tanahashi, he has that Naito fire when they go into their comebacks, and he has that ability. But I wish he had it had that fire. All the time is my biggest mm -hmm. thing with him. I wish he had that fire all the time. It would certainly set him apart from the people he's trying to emulate. Maybe make him a little bit more relatable to the crowd. Yeah. So, uh, Kanemaru comes out, or Togo, and the ref gets knocked out. Togo gets in, choking him. Umino 
Ken Romero attacks two, Magic Killer. Uh, Kent Sato runs the other guys off. Uh, Shoto makes recovery, comes back, is winning. But then Sho makes his return, using his wrench to distract the referee. And this is where Yujiro gets involved and runs Shoto into the ref. And we all house torture. They, they're all back together. They, they all, yeah, screw them. Like, <laughs> they all attack him. We get dick to dick contact. Uh, Sakamoto is back in, but he only gets two. So the ref gets distracted. So Utro hits ju big juice and or ju whatever pimp juice. Sorry, pimp juice. No, it was big juice. It was big juice. No, no, big juice is the lifting one. The, they were the saying one big the, juice on commentary. No, no, because big juice is the one is the big lifting impaler DDT. The snap oh, one. I thought, I, I thought that one was pimp juice. I'm not, uh, again. I'm not sure. Someone he hits one. Juiced. He hits one of the juices, but again, he, he got juiced. Two. Again, m more oh. interference. <laughs> uh, Shota hits the cutter out of nowhere. Daddy Red Shoes shows up, uh, and they're making and so he gets the knee. To, Shota gets the knee to the back of the head and inverted bloody Sunday. Um, he goes in. He starts in on this finish, but then evil comes back. He gets an evil bomber. Uh, everything is evil is reversed. But my biggest oh, I hate it. evil hit the low blow and hit Death Rider, and I was like, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> he only got two. Yeah. Umino reverses everything is evil. Everything is Umino. It hits an Emerald Explosion and Death Rider for the win. At least Evil didn't win, but this match was hard to deal with. Yeah, it it, it was one of those too many things is happening in one match kind of thing. If we wanted to review that show was returning, that should have been the only shenanigry happening. Shenanigry. I'm, I like it. I'm I trying like to figure it. out ways to, to shorten the shenanigans or figure out to put into proper english i don't know we're just going with it we're malballing um yeah there was there was far too much it started to feel like the old house of torture that we've always hated all along and i didn't like it mm -hmm. um especially when they had worked so hard to legitimize themselves before this tournament that to me was a the G1 was two steps forward. This match was one step back for the progression and, of the team. And this isn't even the worst of what House of Torch is gonna do because there's still the last night and oof. I know. Oof. Ah. Yeah. Uh, we move on. Even this Shota is surviving oh. though. Yeah, again, Shota's doing really well and getting the comebacks here looking really good. But again, just ah, uh, it's old House of Torture feel. I've been enjoying House of Torture for a lo last while, and now it's getting to feel like that House of Torture. We were ready to just write off everything they were doing. Mm -hmm. We can't have that again. Gato fixed it. Now they're reverting back. Whatever you fixed, go back to that. <laughs> We Please. can't have House of Torture being torture, especially with the co the the comparisons we want to be able to make between them and hate in in Oedo Tai's new kind of mm -hmm. thing. They do look a lot more now like a House of Torture faction in there. Take some notes, boys. Those girls are doing it right. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. Yeah. <sighs> so we move on mm -hmm. to main event, which was an incredible match between Tetsuya Naito and the Great Okan. Uh, mm -hmm. Khan really getting a lot of control throughout in this match, really working over Naito's uh, legs, uh, really working over that knee, those knee bars, the like just those twisting holds that he was doing. That just there was one where he's like it, like he's like in like a cradle, but he's got a figure four in a cradle. And mm -hmm. like it was, it was this weirdest look. It was so cool. And then Naito just trying to make comeback after comeback, it just constantly going for that Destino throughout the match. If you really notice, mm -hmm. he was trying to hit it multiple times. 
to no avail too Ocon had that scouted yeah uh there's a beautiful spot where naito got in control though he's attacking the, and he gets that esperanza out, out off the top and just spikes con it looks so good yeah so good that was yeah. like classic naito coming out there that was like naito from when i first started watching and he was yeeting around to the iwgp intercontinental championship yeah so good the end of this match uh pump kick by khan uh he calls for the eliminator but he gets victory rolled uh Naito with an enziguri into destino but no he only gets two uh he goes for another destino but khan reverses him into the flatliner and the eliminator to eliminate tetsuya naito from the tournament and put himself into third place in the a block yes mm. boy so happy about this mm. I, I i love me tetsu naito i couldn't be happy right now that he is the iwgp world champion because that means john moxley is not <laughs> so they talked but, about that in this match i know they did they did um and i'm I'm very happy with how Naito's tournament has actually gone because he has had a very solid tournament. Despite taking losses, his matches have been very solid and very, very, very beneficial to the people who are winning over him. Um, I thought this was great. Um, it does certainly give Ocon something to brag about, too, being the KOPW champion. Having a win over the IWGP World Champion, the highest, arguably the highest championship in New Japan, that's pretty impressive. He worked so hard for this win, too. Mm -hmm. So hard. It was really, really interesting to see that, as you mentioned, the technicality at the beginning there. Naito doesn't typically do that. Like, he doesn't mind, like, doing mat work, but he's not used to that much mat work, I think. So it was really fun to see him kind of taken out of his comfort zone, having to scramble a little bit um, to to kind of work with Okan. I loved it. Great match. Yeah, I agree. Uh, quick point update at the end of the A block. We have Zack Sabre Jr. all alone, 14.7 and 2. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, then Shingo Takagi and the Great Okan, along with Evil and Tetsuya Naito, all at 10 points. But Shingo Takagi and the Great Okan both have wins over Evil and Naito. And Takagi did beat Khan. So your first place is Saber, your second place is Takagi, and your third place is the Great Okan. And then Lee... I did call Sin Shingo. You did. did call. Yeah. And then you got Lee, Sonata, Kid, and Umino all with eight points, and Newman alone in last with four points. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, man. It's just been a crazy tournament, man. So, yep. what a ride for Zack Sabre Jr. coming out from behind there. Having a bit of a rough start, but holy hot diggity dang, did he make a resurgence there? Well, he had to win off Naito on the first. Was it? No, no, that was Takagi. That was Shingo, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, he right. He did have a little this stumble early on, and then yeah. It was a little hickety huppy in the front part there. Yeah, but has had a beautiful end to the tournament. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we move on. Oh, you got anything else? Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The final night of block action, night number or 16, day number 16, whatever you want to call it. Bolt No Lake defeats Yuya Yuimura by forfeit due to Yuimura's withdrawal due to his arm injuries. So Bolton Oleg will end this tournament with eight points tied and above Yuya Yuimura because he has a, he has the tiebreaker victory. Crazy. I Crazy feel like happens. I feel like Yuimura would have been in contention here at the end. With the intent in the ten point contention here at the end, honestly, had he not gotten hurt, I think he would have. I think he might have gotten snuck his way in, but we don't know. It's possible. We don't, though. You're right. We don't. Yeah. So we get into our first of four block matches on this show. It's Haroki Goto versus Hanare. Holy poop! 
these two just smacking the crap out of each other in this match, man. Holy moly. The strikes mm -hmm. in this match from both these guys are so good. Lariats, the kicks, the headbutts. Mm -hmm. Always yeah. scary, but looks so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just so good. A um, couple of Ushiguroshis are hitting this match. He gets one earlier in the match, and then he ends up getting one later on. Um just some beautiful spots here. Hanari catching Goto running into his really good looking berserker bomb. Um, he gets the the rampage gets stopped with the choke at one point, which was actually a really cool like reversal into the choke. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Streets of Rage, just a little after, like he gets a native knee in the corner. Uh, he goes Streets of Rage, but he, again, he, uh, Goto slides down to get rid of a choke and he's fading. And instead of just holding the choke, Go to let's go to get the PK and the GTW, but only gets two. And I'm like, you could have just held on and, and passed him out. He could have, but that's not how Goto usually works. Goto likes to have a power Dumb moments. Win. Dumb moments. <laughs> this we'll say this was a hiccup. This was a poor choice. Yeah. So Goto hits the in this match or toward the ending sequence of this match. Goto hits the chest kick, but Hanari right back up, hits him with Rampage for two. Uh, Streets of Rage is stopped, and Goto gets a goes for a suplex. That stopped. Uh, they trade headbutts, which were just sick. Uh, Goto dropping, and H Hanari just throws a few more. Uh, Goto tries to hit a misdirection area, but uh, Hanari avoids it and hits him with that leaping headbutt. And then picks them up streets of rage for the win and taking and Hanari already eliminated, eliminating Goto from the tournament. Yeah. Should have choked I mean, him out, Goto. That. Right. <laughs> right. Choices were made. They were not the right ones. He's learned. He's learned from that one. Hold on to the choke. Um yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add to this one. This was that I felt like almost like a full circle kind of match for Hanare, being that Godo's career has, has extended a little longer. He's seen it, um, Hanare through his Aaron Hanare days, his Toa Hanare days, um, when he was a part of Hontai. So it it's... um. I feel like this was like a full circle and a, a crossroad for Hanari. I feel like it was important, not just to to try to eliminate Goto from the G1. I don't feel that that they were fighting. Well, Hanari wasn't in this one. Goto obviously was. Hanari was fighting to be able to say he beat Goto. Mm -hmm. And that is a big accomplishment to be able to put out there. It's, it's like the next Ishii. That should be your next step. <laughs> yeah, great match. Yeah, I thought these two killed it here. Mm -hmm. We move on to ELP, El Fantasmo versus David Finley. Holy moly. And in, in, in their corner is Arjato and Gato. And this is a point I'm, I'm going to bring up in here. So, like, again, this there's history here. Like, Finley's a kick kicked elp out of the group like he was part of kicking him out of bullet club he was part of taking him out of there he, cl he claims it and there and there, there's a lot of hatred between the two here and it's elp trying to get revenge throughout this entire match and finley trying to say no you're not worth you're not as good as me you're not worth my time while also trying to solidify himself at the top of the standings for the b block he also wants to put himself in that spot. So, like, just how hard they were just going at each other here was great. And I, I love mm -hmm. the passion out of both guys here and almost Finley's desperation at points and ELP's mm -hmm. just constant I'm not giving up throughout. I thought just absolutely phenomenal. So the end of this match, uh, CR2 gets reversed. Finley gets a, a deadlift. Mm -hmm into a buckle bomb which looked great he goes for a power bomb but it's reversed by elp in, in, with a sunset flip and then he gets his own power bomb then hits a cr2 then go goes to the top rope thunder kiss 86 but the ref gets pulled out by gato 
But Giotto immediately runs over and shoves Gato down. And as ELP gets up to look, he sees Giotto next to where the referee got pulled out. Mm. And ELP gets distracted. And he's saying, did you just screw me, Giotto? Like, he thinks Giotto did it. Which I get. That's why I wanted to say Giotto and Gato are here. And, and that mm-hmm. this is the little thing. It's like, and he go, he's go. I think going through is like, oh, he's back with his ta- old tag partner in Gato because they were a tag mm-hmm. team for years. Um, so he is distracted. Finley comes out of nowhere with the shillelagh, hits overkill, and Finley gets the win again. Really good match. I just the ending was interesting to see what kind of story they're telling here. So, okay, real quick, while, while Andre's having fun with his microphone, um, I did want to also mention it wasn't just um, Gato and Shadow uh, being a bit of a distraction at ringside for ELP there. His former uh, world's cutest tag team partner was also on Japanese commentary in Ishimori, Taiji Ishimori. And there was a bit of a standoff. You could see, you know, ELP got out of the ring. They had a little... A little looksy looksy. It would be interesting to hear the the what what Ishimori had to say on uh commentary about the interaction there. But yeah, this was a very intense battle uh between two people who clearly did not like each other, and it was Finley scrambling almost to get away from ELP throughout the entire match from the onslaught that he was just throwing at him it was a great match let's let's get on to the next match because i didn't have a whole ton of notes for this one but i did for the main well yeah we'll talk about this quickly could i scared to catch uh oh i'm at the top of my notes i just remembered i restarted my notes here too uh can I get oh. it versus the red narita a uh, good match but this is uh, i'm 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 mad because this is yeah. the worst House of Torture we've had all tournament long. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this match just pissed me off. And yeah, but at least okay, the finish comes that Takeshi reverses the la- the uh, double cross into a last right power bomb. Narita does pull a knee bar, readjusts center, but Takeshi. Works his way out into a German, hits a hard ass world class elbow, and Takeshita gets the win. But there was so much house torture in- interference in here, and just I mean, P- Takeshka didn't even get to come out. Or he w- he was out, and then they brought yeah uh, yeah Takeshka they brought Takeshita out yeah yeah <sighs> rude so rude. Yeah, I just this uh it annoyed me a lot. I was not very happy with this. Um I was happy that Takeshka won. But like as I've mentioned before, the this stuff that had happened in the last match where show came back and it was just like it's it's now back to everything at once. And like you know, we know some people who feel they need to put every move they've ever learned in the history of their entire career into one 15-minute match, and it's exhausting. But, like, we can't have that with House of Torture. We can't. It's too much. It's too much even just having two of them at ringside, and one of them's not doing anything. It's it's no bueno. Um Something I did want to bring up a bit again about Takeshka, though, is how impressive he has been throughout this entire tournament. Like, I knew he was good before on AEW, but it's it's such a thing that we always say here. It's like the NJPW version that we get of AEW people is phenomenal. But the AEW version that everybody gets is just kind of like... Wow, wow. Like it's still good, but in comparison, it feels like a step up. And man, oh man, did Tony make a good decision sending over to Kashka for this tournament? Because I think anybody else might not have put on as impressive a performance as Takeshka. 
I, I agree with that fully. Um, these two just like, – Takesha has had such a great tournament. And just mm-hmm. to end it – come on, he ended it with a win. I'm happy. He did a great job here. Mm-hmm. Ended the, the block matches with a win here and gets himself – puts himself – possibly into the finals depending on what the mm-hmm. next match is uh puts himself into the the playoffs but like it just he he's such a phenomenal talent and i really want mm-hmm. you to push him harder when he comes back mm-hmm. because this shows that he needs to be pushed into that top position mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. seeing him in this tournament made me realize how much talent he has that we aren't seeing on AEW that still has to be unlocked for him it's just a matter of are they going to let him shine it or is he going to have to take it back to other places that want it I really yeah. think it would be lucrative for them to let him do it on there especially when he's already got other people who know that style and that he's working with mm-hmm. like Kyle Fletcher like Will Ospreay even a Jay White who can do it, you just haven't seen it as well as performance from him since he he was in Japan. But you know he had mm-hmm. performances in him because he's had them in Japan. I mean, we could say that for a lot of people we've seen go from NJPW to AEW. Yeah, Okada of the Kazuchika kind. Yep. So we <laughs> move on. Main event, final match of block action. It's Yoda Suji versus Jeff Cobb. Winner goes on. Loser does not. Damn. Holy crap, this match was good. These two just smacking the crap out of each other, reversing each other's big moves. Just just so good throughout, man. And just mm-hmm. each trying to be the dominant factor. And Cobb, well, short, well, smaller in, in height, is usually a bigger man than most guys because of his, his pure size. But Suji's taller but he, he's outweighed by Cobb here, and it's just these two just smashing into each other. He's trying to use their power, and it's so good. Uh, mm-hmm. Catching each other into big moves throughout this match. Um, at the end of this, I'm just going to go to the end here, or to, towards mm-hmm. the end. Suji trying to suplex him, hits this knockout for him, gets his Falcon Arrow driver for two. It goes for the Marlow crash, but it's stopped, and Cobb gets him up on his shoulders for F5000. But he's delayed on the pin, so he can only get two there. Uh, the tour of the island is stopped with a headbutt uh, and then a knee strike. But Cobb Larry, it's a gene blaster attempt. As he gets up, Suji hits a gene blaster to stop a tour of the islands, then lines up three points, stands gene blaster, and Yoda Suji eliminates Jeff Cobb and moves on to the, the, the semifinals. Freaking crazy. Freaking crazy. And he's another person to 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 get earn potentially an NJPW TV title shot. I would love to see these guys go again because yeah, the, the first part of this match was Suji definitely trying to test out the waters and see how much power he needs to flex on Cobb. To, to get him to do anything. Um, blocking the standing moonsault from Cobb was like, and went, it's not fair. It's not fair on like two different tones and, and meanings there because it's not fair that a man the size of Jeff Cobb can just do a standing moonsault like nobody's business. And it's not fair that we didn't get to see it completed because Suji put his knees up. Um, business. the reversals um being like the just the series of reversals you mentioned which is so crazy so good so amazing um the falcon arrow by suji after like a knockout forearm by Cobb was unexpected and crazy it was at that point where i was like are they are they is that gonna happen is it does that mean Suji's going to take cut? He just yeeted him up for a falcon. Oh, that's freaking crazy. Um, there was that one point where um, Suji went for the Marlow splash. Crash. Marlo crash. 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 
Uh, yeah. He went for the Marlow crash. Um, and then um, Cobb just kind of clotheslined him. Out. Yeah, that was great. Um, the tour of the islands, headbutt, you got that. Um, it was the, the curb stomp. That was um, something I wanted to talk about. Yoda blocking the moonsault with the knees, and then he hops up and followed it up with the curb stomp. I love how Suji has taken the curb stomp and turned it into almost like a regular strike in his arsenal. Um, you know, we've seen it as a, a signature with people like Seth Rollins. I'm sure there's more people, but Seth Rollins is the only one coming to my brain right now. Um, much like how, um, you know, local sensation Dalton Rogue has kind of turned the double stomp into something of a spectacle and, and regular move in his regular move set. Suji is doing the same thing with the curb stomp and I'm kind of digging it. He does it in such a way that looks so great, but then the, the sequence that he does up into it is so perfect. His styling and is just so unique so genuine to him i i absolutely love it yeah again i thought amazing match to cap cap off this tournament yeah 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 100 so the final point totals you have david finley alone in first place going through to the to the b block finals and then you have uh jeff cobb renarita yoda suji and kenosuke takeshita all with 10 points, but you have Kanosuke Takeshita in second, Yorosuji in third to, to round out your your uh, semi your B block semi final block there. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Uh a heck of a tournament, man. Like just these blocks were just up and down. Everybody was alive at one point. It was just so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like look at the standing of that. The lowest points in here are six. That's incredible. Usually we see someone much lower. So good, so good. I'm just proud. I, I mean, it's the wrong order, but I called the three in the B block. I'm pretty proud of myself there. Wrong order, but I'm happy. I'm I happy. Two, I, I'll take that bragging. I had two out of three. Yeah, but it's not three. Yeah, but it's still two out of three. So it's still, it's that's it's like seventy five percent. That's not a hundred. It's 66.6%, madam. Oh, I tried to give you more. Holy crap. Why would you do that? Because because math is math. Well, you didn't have to do it right. This isn't high school. No one's marking you. People watching this are. <laughs> I think the people watching this are doing the math either. Yes, they are. Come on. They're all doing math. We all love Everybody loves math. More no. math. More math. No. no. What a tournament, though, man. What a tournament oh. we have been given this year. So good. So good. Mm hmm So good. So, so good. good. Oh, I got more. you. Bum, 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 bum. I was changing up going, I want more. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't. Well, want we can't. I don't think that our sleep schedules could handle more, my friend. No. It really can't, dude. I've only watched one day of Five Star Grand Prix action because I've been so busy with other stuff that it's just... Uh... I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. Let's so, go let's go watch more. You can find me on the X at That Candid Guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at That Candid. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk and our YouTube page, youtube.com, slash at Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. You can also find us in audio form over at A Plus Productions. Uh, check them out on their Facebook page. You get the link to, all, to the audio over there. So check them out. Uh, yeah, A, A Plus Productions on Facebook, and you can find all the links from there. Also, check out our friends over at Twitch, or at our local station over on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, Twitch for all the live content, and YouTube for all the replays, and some and live content too. Uh, so check them out. And also, wanted to give a shout out, or you can find me there on Fridays with Mel, uh, doing Japanese wrestling update. And I'll be back in September, uh, on the 18th for Agatha. All along. <laughs> 
I know. Oh, yeah. Go to the other YouTube page and watch this past Saturday's uh, Mark Interviews OLE featuring the beautiful Mel Ball. And we got a, we got Mel Ball. We, Mel Ball cried. They existed. Woo, we did it. Yeah, did it. you did, didn't you? You brats. We did it. We did it. Also, go shout out or check out our boy Mike the Ref on his Backbreaker video page where he simulcasts all of our stuff. Thank you so very much. Check him out live at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref where he does his AEW watch songs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday. Uh, you can also find him playing games the rest, the rest of the week on his Twitch. And if you want to say replays of his game content, go to youtube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore game where you can find content from him, Mr. PJC, this little dude right here, Rick Jules, and their free Quinn Geese. Kayla J. Kayla J, Kayla J, Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Melba, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky by Melba Collins. You can also find me, as Andre mentioned, on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. I believe this Friday we are going to be live. We do not have any wrestling going on in Edmonton this Friday. Again. And <laughs> and we will be live at 8 p.m. Oh, yeah. You can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are hopefully going to get an episode out very, very soon. Because, man, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. The girl's in the middle of getting her promotion at work, so she's been busy, 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 busy. But we'll hopefully have one out for you very, very soon, so stay tuned to our socials, socials to see when that is coming out. If you are wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is njpwworld.com. It is a higher amount of yen, approximately 10 Canadian, because I love Sean Spears, but it's more like 14 50 according to this guy over here. So amazing price to watch some amazing professional wrestling and go back in there if you want a taster of what you could be getting into. All of the New Japan TV title matches are free on the site there. So go check free. those out before taking the plunge. Free. Imagination. <laughs> Andre. My interested friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Nope, nothing at all. Nope, no. Nope. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I want to thank each and every one of you, whether you're watching us on video or you're listening to us in audio form. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, please, uh, if you are listening to audio form, please uh, like the video or like the audio over at A Plus Productions. We really do appreciate it. And if you're watching on video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Uh, don't forget to share it out to your friends, family, and just crazy little kooky, crazy cupcakes. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Take no. Hello. <laughs> and that being said, I am your mama. No print there is right. We will see you next time. Adios.